Welcome to the German American Heritage Museum in Washington, D.C. My name is Katja Sibel and I'm the Executive Director. Come on in. We currently have an exhibit about the German American artist Fritz Weiss. It's called From the uh, Black Forest to the California Desert, The Life and Work of Fritz Weiss. As you enter our reception area, you can see the first set of paintings right here. And several of these paintings are pre-war, specifically uh, on this wall. The guitar player is a work from 1929, and uh, the person depicted is probably Fritz Weiss's brother, one of his brothers. He came from a large family with many siblings. And uh, this is a work, um, he had not yet quite developed his style. So later in life, he really was known for his abstract expressionist art. But here you can see that this is uh, a very realistic painting and uh, the outlines are soft, not quite using the, uh, the style that um, was known and used by the impressionists, but it is realistic. Here we have another work just three years later. All of these paintings were done during his studies at the, uh, at the Bauhaus and uh, he studied under Paul Klee and Vasily Kandinsky. This is uh, a bridge in Cologne from 1932. Again, still very realistic and uh, not yet um, as abstract as his later paintings. Here is a a World War II painting. You have to know that uh, Fritz Weiss was persecuted for his art. His art was deemed degenerate and uh, the uh, Gestapo was on to him and many of his works were destroyed. They uh, put him in a forced labor camp for about a year and he suffered tremendously but uh, his spirit was unbroken and he kept painting. His style of painting adapted and he didn't create anything that would be called objectionable. So this was um, after his release from a forced labor camp and it is a cloister on Lake Constance and it was done in 1943, so towards the, uh, the end of World War II. And over here we have um, one of his later works Hawaiian Shore from 1977, The Girl, um, this is a work from 1947, so this was still done in Germany, he didn't leave until the 1950s, and then here hiding behind the flags um, is an abstract work called The Golden Hills from 1967. And during that time, he was already living in California. He had already emigrated and uh, was teaching and lecturing um, at UCLA. All right, let's head upstairs. Oh, and here's another lovely work, Blue Song, very characteristic of his style, definitely abstract expressionist from 1953. Mm -hmm. Let's head upstairs. Here in the staircase, we have some additional works, different media. This is a very interesting one. It's from 1924 and it's called Gasworks, a, uh, a seemingly innocent title, but it came with another painting um, called The Gas Worker. And together, these were indicative of the labor movement in the 1920s. And the labor movement was associated with the, uh, the social democrats. And uh, in some cases, even the uh, socialist parties that rose to some prominence during the 1920s in Germany. This would have been the years following World War I. And uh, as you know, those were difficult years. But uh, this was seen as subversive by the uh, national um, socialists because the, um, the labor movement was not well regarded by the, uh, by the Nazis. And that painting, together with the uh, gas worker, definitely made him a target. This is 
one of my personal favorites. It's called Portrait of a Girl and it's made during the 1920s. It's, uh, it's a very unique style. It's reminiscent of Fauvism, which uh, was really prominent during an earlier era and uh, the, uh, the green um, touches here are an indicator of that but I just think it's very very lovely. We don't know who the model was. Again it could be one of the uh, Feist siblings or um, a friend, who knows, but I just think it's, uh, it's a very lovely painting. And this is one that we are going to keep in the museum for our permanent collection. Some more prints, and um, all of these are hand printed, and they're all from the uh, 1920s. Again, very much Art Deco inspired. And the, uh, the stark contrast of black and white creates a very striking image. And this is called Mother and Child. And the one down here is simply entitled Composition. Another lovely painting, this one done in oil, Melting Snow. And this one actually does have an overall almost uh, impressionist uh, appearance to it because of the way the colors melt into each other, um, especially for the lake surface and uh, this area right here, there is not a clear outline, everything sort of blends together. Um, this tree right here, uh, covered in, in snow and ice. You can see that um, he leaned upon earlier styles and uh, for inspiration here. And here we have one of his expressionist paintings from 1933 and it's called The City. And this one is very unique. It's, uh, it, it uses metallic colors and the, um, the city is almost in the background. So very prominent are these black lines that are all over the painting. They weave from one side of the frame to the other in patterns, but also in horizontal and vertical lines. And in between, I don't know if you can see this, you can actually see the outlines of the houses. And then here we have our main exhibit room. We continue on the wall over here, another lovely painting called Cologne on the Rhine from 1936. And this is a view from, uh, from a window. You can clearly see the curtains right here. And it's looking out over the Rhine River bridge and uh, the uh, cathedral in the background and the lights reflected on the water surface, some boats. So this is a, this is a very traditional um, landscape or cityscape and um, just a very, a very um, calming painting. When I see this, I always find that it just exudes an aura of, of calm. And yet over here there are dark clouds moving in and i always wondered if uh, since this was 1936 the nazis had already risen to power um world war ii was just three years away if this is uh something 
that a sign of something ominous on the horizon because you can definitely see that there are darker clouds and the water is much darker over here too so maybe he had he had an inkling of the uh, things that were to come and that brings us to our next uh, wall section right here this is uh, called the War Series, and it was painted between 1940 and 1945. It's, it's a very dark series, naturally. It, uh, it helped him deal with uh, the experiences that he had during World War II. And here in the center, you can see a soldier with a, um, I think this is a grenade and very prominent here is the face large eyes grim lines and the mouth is uh, basically a tight line and he's alert but definitely tense and uh, the medium here is encaustic and uh, that's a technique that Feiss perfected and he actually held um, patents on that too. So encaustic art uses wax, thinly spread wax, and he had perfected a technique where he used electricity to liquefy the wax and then spread it out on the canvas or whatever material he chose to use. He didn't always work with uh, traditional canvases. There are some other paintings. There's one over here where he used felt, woolen felt as a surface. So he was uh, really quite uh, um, willing to experiment with his techniques and with his, um, with his surfaces. So the war series again, um, rather dark. Right next to it is another one called The Cloister from 1947. And uh, this is again a landscape and uh, it's a mountain scene. Um, you can see the uh, Baroque uh, church tower here and then the mountains in the background. And 1947, that would have been two years after the war. So peace had returned to the land and you can see this reflected here. It's a, it's a sunny day, must be spring or summer because um, the trees and the plants are green and there are flowers everywhere. So um, this is uh, indicative of uh, a new start. War is over, it's time to hope again, it's time to live again. Dream of Ulysses, um, an abstract expressionist work by Feist. And uh, this draws, of course, on Greek mythology and uh, the uh, figure of uh, Ulysses. Let's head over here. And these are not in chronological order, which is why we're jumping back and forth in terms of years. So here is one called Sailboats from 1953. And this is another one of my favorites. Harbor from 1957. Melodic from 1950. And this work in particular always reminded me a bit of uh, Salvador Dali's art just because of um, these flowing lines and uh, right here they seem to they seem to melt and and merge together I don't really know uh, if uh, Fritz Weiss had a particular admiration for Salvador Dali um, he did experiment with many different styles, and he wasn't, uh, he wasn't shy to try new things, um, although he referred to his own art style as Feissism. He really called it that because he said that uh, 
he received inspiration from many different people, but then turned it very much into something of his own. But I think here, one could definitely say that inspiration came from Dali. Up here, another example of abstract expressionism from 1960, Sweet on White. Here, a set of three paintings called Unfolding, also from the 1960s, but from the latter part of the decade. An earlier work from 1947, um, again, I like this one very much, called Destroyed in Forms, and uh, definitely an abstract painting, just like this one, called Trojan Horse. And right here, we have one, and I think this is done in acrylic, called Floating Yellow from 1958. And what draws the eye here is this stylized yellow shape. In the 1960s, Feist really liked to explore floating shapes. We saw that here with the floating yellow, and then also here, just start three years later, a floating U-shape and um, this was something that he liked to play with and he used uh, in this case a very simple off-white cream colored background and then um, bold primary colors here it's a, a, rust, uh, a rusty reddish color um, a dark blue and then a green to display his art on that background. Underneath here, Surf, from 1963, and uh, again, what, what stands out is very bold colors. Here, mostly from the uh, blue and green spectrum with uh, some bright orange tossed in and here also some purples and a uh, bronzish, a brownish uh, bronze color. So here he really liked to experiment with very bold colors. In, in, his, uh, in his war series, the colors are very subdued. They're very dark. We're working with um, dark green, brown, but here the colors are bright, they're popping. Downstairs in the lobby, we have uh, a painting called Hawaiian Shore from 1977. And uh, right here is another one from the same year and also painted on the uh, Hawaiian Islands. And this is uh, Keala Kekua Hospital. It's a, it's a view from the hospital. He was spending some time there to recuperate, to recover. And uh, this is a, uh, a typical Hawaiian landscape with uh, the ocean in the background, the Pacific in the background, and then of course palm trees, and a very stylized sun over here on the uh, right side. Underneath, Roses, Roses of the Past are from an earlier decade, from 1966 to be exact. This is another encaustic but unlike the war series, the background material used here is felt. And uh, it's, it creates a striking texture. If you come really close, you can, you can see um, that the uh, felt fibers are visible here in some places, right here in this arrowhead. Um, you can see the felt fibers and also right here in the uh, profile, the nose right here. And 
then we have some additional works here in, uh, in the uh, display cases. This one is untitled and uh, it's, it's another expressionist, uh, abstract expressionist work. And again, what is striking is uh, the use of color. Stylistically, it reminds me a little bit of uh, the city with the lines that uh, crisscross the painting, but the overall impression is very different because it has these striking highlights in bold orange and uh, green and yellow. And then here against uh, the wall, the gladiator from 1957, drawing on ancient Roman history. This might be a bit dark right here, but this one is entitled Birds and they show three very stylized uh, bird shapes in flight or taking off. And then here, some lovely ink drawings. This is ink in watercolor and it's called Mountainside Town from 1976 and Fruit of the Island from 1976 as well. And interestingly enough, both of these were drawn with his left hand. Um, Feist suffered a stroke in the 1970s, and it led uh, to his right hand becoming impaired. But he did not want to quit painting, and instead learned to use his left hand. And uh, you can definitely see that he was still experimenting here. Also, if you look at his signature, it's quite different from his earlier works. It angles downward, whereas here, his signature in this work from 1959, this would have been uh, pre-stroke, has an upward tilt. This is uh, the city of uh, Stockholm. Again, um, it's an, uh, an abstract work, but uh, in the 1950s, Feis visited Sweden, and uh, this was his way of um, paying homage to the city of Stockholm, the capital city of Sweden. And here we have a very nice small work called Variations on a Linear Theme from 1948. The frame is badly damaged, but the uh, paintings themselves are completely intact. And the, uh, the story, how we got these works is uh, almost as interesting as the life of Fritz Weiss himself. In the summer of 2018, we were approached by the estate of Fritz Weiss and uh, asked if we were interested in obtaining some of the paintings. Uh, Weiss's widow um, had died a few years earlier and most of his artwork was in Appleton, Wisconsin. Now, the Weiss um, family lived in California and uh, the, uh, the artwork had somehow been stored in a warehouse in Wisconsin for many, many years. And uh, it took us over a year to arrange for um, some 50 plus paintings to come from Wisconsin to Washington, DC. And it was one of our board members, Hardy von Auenmüller, who made that possible. He flew over there, um, loaded everything into a rented vehicle, and then drove all the way back from Appleton, Wisconsin to DC. And this was uh, in the summer of uh, 2019. And um, then the paintings arrived 
here and we're so very pleased to have them. Here are some smaller works and uh, all of these are from the 1940s, from 1947 and 1948 respectively. And all of them abstract. This one is called A Study in Movement, Forms Rising, and then Two Closed Forms. And here we have uh, some personal belongings. So here is uh, Fritz Weiss in the flesh from an article in the LA Times from 1952. And right here, we have two of his identity documents. The first one, the older one, was a membership card for the German Art College's Student Club. And um, it says that he, studied, that he studied in Stuttgart at the time. He was born in Furtwangen, a small town in southwestern Germany in the uh, Black Forest region, and um, eventually left that area to pursue his studies. At, uh, at the uh, university and the uh, arts college in Stuttgart. And right next to that is his travel document. And uh, this was issued in lieu of a passport by the Allied High Command for Germany. And it was a temporary d travel document. And he used this document to come to the US. And uh, the person um, that is to be notified here in case of death or an accident is his sister, Friedel Hasenfratz. Uh, as I said earlier, Feist came from a very large family and three of his siblings had already emigrated to the United States in the 1920s. So he was one of the younger siblings and these were um, older brothers and sisters who had left their native town of Furtwangen and their native Germany to come to the US. And most of them settled in the California, uh, in, in the state of California. And um, I guess one relative ended up on the East Coast, but uh, we're still trying to put all these pieces together and uh, figuring out where uh, the family is dispersed right now. Unfortunately, um, Feiss himself did not have any children with his wife Janet here in the US. He was previously married in Germany, um, but we, uh, we don't have a, a contact with his, with his um, wife's relations over there or with the uh, remaining family in Germany. We're still doing some research and looking into that because it would certainly be fascinating to know what became of, uh, of those relations. So if you feel inspired to come to Washington DC as a result of this, um, we would love to have you. The exhibit is going to be up until the middle of April, so another two months. And uh, we are open Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 5, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, we also accept tour groups, but we do request that you make prior arrangements because if the group is rather large, we will have to close the museum. Um, let us know if you are interested in obtaining one of our brochures. We'd be happy to send that to you. Um, for a small contribution to reimburse us for the postage and the um, uh, production costs of the brochure. And uh, this has a lot of information about the exhibit, about the life of Fritz Weiss and uh, the different stages. And um, we'd be very happy to send that to you. And it's a, it's a nice little souvenir booklet 
can see the uh, bridge in Cologne in here for those interested in art. Thank you so very much and we look forward to welcoming you in Washington DC. Thank you.